These priorities should be subjected to direct citizen and neighborhood input. Not only where the lack, not only where the policy, not only was there a lack of lack of policies. I'm sorry, I, there again, I blew it. Development of complete neighborhoods and supporting availability of diverse housing options. The supposed reason for the housing shortage not, was not subjected to public scrutiny, but the city administration decided to move them out of the public view. Unknown to the citizens of Regina, an Ontario-based consultant, along with a group of city planners and private stakeholders, sworn to secrecy and guided by those policies, had been working for two months drafting the comprehensive housing strategy. That was two months before the public saw them and council endorsed them. I also said, quote, as the city moves towards defining its diverse housing options, I would ask council to provide ample opportunity for the public to review and comment on those options. I would also ask that the city continue the practice of seeking community input about pro proposed developments, even though the community plans will disappear once this new official community plan is adopted. When questioned about that statement, Mr. Carlston's respond, Mr. Carlston responded that Regina's neighborhood plans would become guidelines. As guidelines, these neighborhood plans will no longer be authorized by bylaw, which means changes can be made to these neighborhoods without any notification, as there is no longer a legal requirement to do so. The loss of neighborhood plans allows for rezoning applications to be approved immediately in specific residential or mixed use areas, neighborhoods identified as appropriate for rezoning by the administration. Alternative development standards can now be utilized to develop a specific chosen location or develop an area neighborhood or a specific subdivision parcel or property. The alleged reason for immediately rezoning neighborhoods, parcels or properties without notice to the affected owners or the public is to, per is to permit affordable housing. The strategies that support arbitrary rezoning are saturated with phrases about various facets of affordable housing, like creating affordable housing, innovative affordable housing, accommodating affordable housing, innovative affordable housing, fast track affordable housing. This is deliberate and intended to convince the public affordable housing is not possible without arbitrary rezoning. That is not true. As stated in the consultant's background review, the present Regina development plan, the official community plan, includes policies that support and encourage the development of affordable housing for low and moderate income households. As stated by the consultant, it is not the lack of policies or zoning that are to blame for the inadequate affordable housing. It is a lack of adherence to city, bylaw, city policies. That is a problem of political will, not policies or zoning. Each established neighborhood is unique and the existing zones protect and reflect their character, whether it's one of the subdivisions in the north, east, west, or south regions of Regina. Our neighborhoods are where we belong, where we raise our families, establish friendships, and where we want to live out our lives. Elimination of our neighborhood plans, opening the zoning bylaw, and introducing arbitrary rezoning, as recommended in strategies four, five, and six, could subject every neighborhood and property in the city to inappropriate spot rezonings and destroy their character. City council can adopt whatever policy it wants and nothing will happen until the residents see the results of those policies. Then regardless of the justification for the rezoning and subsequent development, city council will be subjected to the community's outrage. Some of the goals in the housing strategy envision, envision densification of built up areas through the introduction of secondary suites, garden suites, and laneway housing. If accompanied by on-site parking, proper access for fire suppression, and if of a mass height and orientation so as not to create an undue impact on the existing neighborhood, they may be practical. That said, these housing innovations require adherence to precise criteria, standards, and rigorous oversight, oversight as, it is, as is the case for the pilot project in the Greens on Gardner. The consultant recommended the expansion of, secondaries, of, the, of the secondary suites category. 
permitting secondary suites within single detached, semi-detached, and, down, and townhouse units. Uh, as standard, oh, sorry, as garden suites in existing and new areas subject, subject to appropriate development criteria and standards. Unlike what is in the city's zoning bylaw is stated under foster the creation of secondary suites, where it states secondary suites can be attached to existing homes, the consultant did not include the breezeway or tunnel attachment type of, of suites as an option. Councils has said they do not want structures potentially 36 feet high and with a total lot coverage of 50% like the one at 2514 Atkinson Street. To avoid that potential, that phrase must be removed from the implementation plan. I am asking Council to table the proposed implementation strategy so that any recommendations emanating from the Mayor's Housing Summit can be considered and incorporated into the plan. That amended implementation plan, along with the criteria for the development of affordable housing, the proposed criteria for secondary suites and rooming houses, a concise explanation of the regulatory strategy, strategies like density boning, bonusing, transfer of development rights, and an explanation with examples of proposals utilizing alternative development standards and how they would fit into existing neighborhoods should be presented for consultation to the people of Regina, as very few were able to attend the Mayor's Housing Summit respectfully submitted to Regina City Council this 29th day of April 2013. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, any questions of the delegation? Council Donald. Thanks for that. Uh, good evening, Mr. Yes. Let's see if we can agree on one thing first, and that is that it uh, doesn't matter which policies we pick out here, but if it's a brand new development and we have seniors housing and density and we have suites and so on, it probably will work fairly well. Would that be a fair assessment? Uh, through your your worship uh, to Councillor O'Donnell, uh, I have been doing a lot of rating over the last few months as this has been moving quickly through the whole process. I must admit, and you may not like me to say this, but the city of Saskatoon has decided to uh, make affordable housing uh, far more diverse than the city of Regina. Here, the focus seems to be more on the older established areas of Regina. I would really appreciate seeing this be more diverse because those new areas are going to someday be the established areas. And you can't, the mistake we've always made, and I will say I was on a council that did this too, we did not force developers to put in. Uh, uh, more multifamily type of development. And uh, and that was, be I didn't vote for it, <laughs> but others did, so what can I say? And it, it's, uh, it has been a developer-driven uh, situation where they think single family, single detached is the best way to go. I think we need to do that. No problem with your comment, I'll carry on. You've led very well into my questions and, sure. and what I would like to pursue with you. Where we look at the change, and I use the word change first, in existing neighborhoods, that seems to where we, we, no matter what we're trying to do, we run into roadblocks. Can we agree on that first? Uh, yes, and we did too. Okay. And uh, can I elaborate? Absolutely. Here, here's, my, here's the problem. I have a vision. You have a vision, we all have a vision of what this is going to look like. I, I base my vision on some of what I've seen happen in my neighborhood, and I've been here before. I know all members of council know what that vision is. I don't want that vision. <clears throat> I, I would welcome uh, densification in my neighborhood, and I don't think my neighbors would, would uh, object to things like garden suites, like they're doing in Vancouver, where you have 590, 600 square foot, uh, suite at the back of the house, <coughs> doesn't ruin the neighborhood, maintains the character. We live in an area that's close to the university, lots of students needing housing. I could see that. That's, I, 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 would, I would enjoy seeing that in my neighborhood. And by the way, I will repeat what some others have said. I don't have a problem with the housing strategy. I have a problem with certain aspects of it and problems with my vision because it may not be what 
the final vision is going to be. That's, that's where I'm running into trouble. I don't want to see apartment blocks. Personally, I don't want to see Regina devolve into something like Jane and Finch in Toronto. Or I'm sure you can appreciate what I'm saying. You've been on council a long time, so no problem. So, speaking of long time and aging, I'll lead into my next question. <laughs> and I'm getting there too. <laughs> so, specifically to an existing neighborhood, you have a whole whack of people that don't want to leave the neighborhood. Yes. They've aged a little bit. Yes. They're looking to say, you know what, could you put a seniors complex into my neighborhood? Now, despite what one other our delegation said, I'm not talking about a school site, I'm not talking about park, but there may be a situation where there are two or three homes that are no longer viable and they are side by side, or such, you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. let's say that in an ideal situation, there's a piece of property that is useful for this purpose. Mm -hmm. In an existing neighborhood of single detached homes. Second thing, I'm gonna bet, uh, I'll hear this. Council Tony, you have to get your question. I know, <laughs> the, the arguments will be about traffic, parking, and so on. How do I make that seniors complex come to fruition? You know what? I think uh, if it isn't if it isn't a, a, an ugly apartment block, or if it isn't some kind of ugly development where you have, I think it could be made to fit. There there are options. It's just imagination that stops us, and, con and the ability to come up with concepts that stops us from doing that. Yes, I know lots of people that live in four plexus, three plexus. This can be done. It's when you get to very high density in neighborhoods with little houses that you run into problems yeah. and that's where you get the blowback or the feedback negative feedback so thanks for your comments thank you council uh, other questions from the delegation councilman durham <coughs> thank you worship good to see you thank you for your for your presentation i have uh, just uh, to you your worship one question here i just noticed on uh, the uh Inappropriate. You, you mentioned here it says inappropriate spot rezoning will destroy our character of our uh, uh, the neighborhood. Can you explain that? It, it's I, I look at that. I'm thinking a little bit more to extreme. What you're looking at? Uh, can you just educate me on what do you, what do you mean by that? Uh, in response, Your Worship, um, when you do a spot rezoning, see this is the connection between asking to see the criteria and spot rezoning. Courts do not look kindly on spot rezoning. So if the city creates a criteria as to what neighborhoods or what properties uh, would meet certain conditions and therefore be appropriate for rezoning, this could be neighborhoods, properties, um, and if the criteria is such, then that property or that area could be rezoned using that criteria. <clears throat> That's why seeing the criteria is so important to me because I, I, I see that connection. And uh, so far, we have no idea what the criteria is going to be. So one more question to you, Your Worship. So when would you like to see this criteria when you're talking about? Well, the, the mayor's housing strategy isn't for at least another two to three weeks. I see no reason <laughs> if council felt so inclined. Uh, I'm sure the criteria has been, has been developed or is, they have a good idea what it's going to be. Why not do that in the next two or three weeks? Or after the housing strategy is complete, take whatever comes out of that, filter it into the implementation strategy, uh, and bring it back to the public for you know one night isn't isn't all that much. That's my thought. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Council Plato. Sorry, thought there was somebody else. Uh, thank you for presenting. Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, um, you say you want densification, and yet you've also said you don't want densification. You said it today. You said it twice. I heard you, and I'm going, wait a minute. I want to. Could you clarify? Do Do you want densification? I'm going to say in your neighborhood, because of what Councillor O'Donnell was talking about. How do we fix that problem? And you wanted densification, but on the grand scheme of things. We don't want that Through you, your worship. Please. Uh, in response, I said there's nothing wrong with densification. It has to be done sensitively. In your older neighborhoods, you're going to get a lot of people angry if you just go and stick in apartment blocks or something that isn't appropriate. 
You can densify. They're doing this in Vancouver. They're densifying some of the oldest neighborhoods in Vancouver with garden suites, laneway housing, and they're very attractive. And to me, I think that that's densification. To me, that's densification. I don't want to see something that's going to turn into, well, five or ten years. It's something that's detractive in the neighborhood and not attractive to the neighborhood. And it doesn't fit the character, and it's not compatible. I'm not, if I could, Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure where you live, but are you familiar with 3 Block 17th Avenue? 3 Block 17th Avenue? It's about six blocks away from the area. Oh, yes, I know what you mean. Yes, sorry. There's a little church. There's a church there about 2000. I think you're talking about the old Lutheran church, are you not? 2003, 2004, there was an uproar. Yeah, St. Philip's? Yeah, I think so. Mr. Mayor, if I could, to you, there was an uproar about that development going in there, five condos. Well, there was nothing wrong with that development. Absolutely. I was on council, and I'm going to say, if I could, what would you see would be wrong with putting up those types of developments and or if it would be, in that particular case, it was for sale. But if that was a rental project, would you have, like, and you saw an 8-plex or a 12-plex, as you mentioned, you know, people that live, do you see a problem with that type of thing? I personally don't, because if you have on-site parking, those people all have garages. I thought that was a very attractive, redactive use in our neighborhood for that church site. For me, I have no problem with that. And if I could, one other comment that you made, that you'd like to see social housing spread out amongst the city and in the newer areas. You, at the time, being on council, I'm going to assume you would have been around when Rochdale, McCarthy Park, Lakewood, and Argonne Park all got social housing. Is that correct? Yes, we did. Yes, I remember our project. And those were, at the time, newer areas. Yes, yes, that's right. So you spread it out quite a bit. Okay, I just wanted to clarify, because I know it's, there's lots of things that go on, and sometimes people aren't aware. Only questions, not debates, okay? Yeah, no, I'm not debating, thank you. But that was good. I just wanted to know if you were fully aware. Through you, Your Worship, we did a lot of social housing. I'm not giving myself a pat on the back. I mean, it was needed. And yes, we did spread it around. The problem, if you don't spread it around, in 20 years to come, there'll be another council sitting here and saying, gee, we didn't put any social, they didn't put any social housing or low income or affordable housing out there. Why not? If I could, what do you see as the number of places that Regina would need to help out the situation today? I don't work in the area. I think it's critical. I think for people on low incomes, I believe Regina is in a bad situation. And I think, I'm not trying to hold up this plan. I think we need to get on with it. I just want to see it done right. That's why I'm here tonight. Not to make your lives difficult. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions for the delegation? Thank you, Ms. Tapia, for your presentation. Very thoughtful. Paul Gingrich is the...